We are here for the third game of the season. We are one and one after a classic against Texas A&M in which we almost pulled off the upset. It would have been a historical one, but we are on the road again to take on James Madison. And this is a team that I think that we can definitely beat here in week number three. We are one and one, they're 0 and one. In the first game of the season against UTEP, we ran a total of 102 plays between the two schools. And I'm shooting for about 110 plays per game. Against Texas A&M, we only ran 86. I talked about it at the end of the Texas A&M game. I will be bumping the quarter length up to seven minutes to try and achieve that 110 plays per game goal of mine. You know, if we go a little bit above, then we go a little bit above. But in the game against Texas A&M, we would have been like, I don't know, 24 plays away from 110. And that's just way too little amount of plays in a game. Robert Briggs is going to be banged up in today's game as James Madison's quarterback is number 13, Joshua Douglas, a redshirt freshman who threw for a touchdown and two interceptions in their week one loss. Their running back is a former four-star recruit, George Petaway, and he is a first-time starter with a lot of good skill caps. This is somebody that when he's a senior will probably be 94, 95 overall. It could potentially even be higher. On the defensive side of the ball, they are led by 82 overall defensive end Eric O'Neill, number 99. And this guy is somebody that I'm pretty sure anybody in the Mountain West would like to have on their team. A really good football player. As Here is a look at the James Madison Dukes roster. This is a team that has a couple of 80 overall guys, but majority of the players are going to be in the 70s. They don't have a team that's filled with a ton of great players and a ton of great talent. But they do have a solid team overall, 76 overall as a team, 77 offense, and 76 defense. Something else I forgot to mention is Bryce Radford is going to be out for the next three weeks. Jarvis Griffiths will be taking over the starting role, a 68 overall center. He's got decent skill caps, but I don't think he's really ever going to have a chance to be our number one center here in the series. But we are underway here. James Madison at home. We are returning the opening kickoff. It's Robert Freeman the fourth as he will take this one from the left up the middle, and then he's taken down at the 22-yard line, a pretty solid return for Utah State. Robert Briggs, a little banged up in today's game. We'll see how much he is utilized by Jalen Clark in this Utah State offense. He's used pretty well here on the four-yard pickup to begin this game. I don't know how many carries he will get here. Bryson Barnes, a quick strike to Jack Estera, and he has a first down to the left. So we move the chains here on our opening possession. And Thomas Yates checks into the game. The true freshman running back will take this one up the middle for a pickup of four yards. You know, he had a pretty good game against Texas A&M. He was utilized quite a few times. Antoine Hausler out there now as a receiver. Bryson Barnes is going to try and scramble for the first down, and he's taken down after a short pickup. Utah State would have to punt the football. It's Joshua Douglas giving this one to George Petaway as he will break a tackle and pick up seven yards. He's taken down by the starting middle linebacker, Bronson Aleval. Here is the quarterback, Joshua Douglas, in the pocket, and he's got his guy. This is going to be a first down pickup. That's number zero, Yamir Knight, his go-to guy on the outside as they are at midfield here. Here's a throw to George Petaway to the right. as That's a good block there by Yamir Knight, and that's a huge pickup for George Petaway to the 38-yard line. Petaway to the right of Joshua Douglas. He steps, he steps back, and he's got his guy. It's a tight end inside the 10-yard line, and it's a shoestring tackle made by Ike Larson. James, Ma James Madison is set up goal to go. Second down and four. Douglas keeps, and he will score a touchdown. James Madison takes a quick lead in today's game. Our defense could not stop the attack, and the redshirt freshman quarterback did anything that he wanted. Here's Briggs on first down, and he's going to be taken down for a huge loss. And Briggs looked a little bit shaken up as well on a play. That would later bring up a third down and 14. It's Barnes in the pocket. He's got time to throw, and he delivers a strike along the sidelines. Jack Castera picks up the first down. Here is the first down give to Robert Briggs as he's weaving in and out of traffic, using his speed, getting outside to the left, and he's got a huge pickup across midfield. Robert Briggs, I'm telling you, if this guy gets into space, he's a shifty running back. Fake to Hysteria, and here's the give to the freshman running back as Thomas Yates will pick up five yards. Second down to five now. Hysteria slot left. He will throw it to Hysteria, and he's going to pick up four yards, and it's going to be third and one upcoming. 
This is an easy play call. Give the football to Robert Briggs, and he picks up the first down. Although I will admit it looked like he was short at first. Here's Briggs again on second down, and he's going to pick up solid yardage fighting through contact. I've noticed that Utah State likes to run their running backs to the left. We'll see if we see any change here this season. As here's Thomas Yates trying to put on a move, and he's got a first down pickup himself. So a strong drive here for the Aggies on their second possession of the game as we fake to Robert Briggs. Bryson Barnes getting out of the pocket and throws it to Robert Briggs, and he's got a, another first down pickup. We will move the chains. It's first and 10 from the 11-yard line. We'll have to earn this touchdown here. Second down and 10. Here is Bryson Barnes in the pocket. Bryson Barnes steps up, and he is walloped at the five-yard line, and the ball comes free, and James Madison will turn us over. A huge hit by James Madison. They recover the fumble, and they end what looked like a promising drive. It's Jacob Thomas coming up and laying the boom. You know, it's like the uh, Costco guys, boom or doom. In that case, it was a boom for the defense and a doom for the offense as James Madison will take over, and it's a first down run for George Petaway. Here is a give to the backup running back now, and he'll pick up six yards. It was Petaway coming in motion, kind of diverted the attention from the defense. Play fake to Petaway. Here's Douglas in the pocket. Throws this one, and it's batted around, and it is dropped. That should have been intercepted. It was off the hands of like three defenders. Omario Keek had the best shot at it at the end and couldn't get to it. Now Joshua Douglas on third down will use his legs to pick up the first down, and that would bring an end to the first quarter. James Madison with the football now. Second down and eight. This one will be thrown out to the tight end as that's a good tackle by Simeon Harris, who is shaken up on the play. That will bring in Raider Dumani, the backup strong safety. Here's George Petaway on the Texas route, and they utilize him on the ground and through the air. First down and 10 now at the 42-yard line. Here's Douglas. That one looked like it probably should have been intercepted. J.D. Drew watched the pass get thrown right over his head and didn't make a play on it. Second down and six. Here's Petaway. The give to Petaway, and he's got space for a couple of yards before Bronson Aleval takes him down. Here's a third down and four for the Dukes. Can we get off of the field? Here's Douglas in the pocket. All day to throw, and he finds his man. That's another first down for James Madison. They have been really good on third downs. Speaking of third downs, here's another one. Petaway in motion again. We'll see if they run the same kind of concept. They don't, as this one is going to fall incomplete. Joshua Douglas had his tight end open and just missed him. Now they'll bring out the field goal kicker for about a 44-yard attempt, and it's good. James Madison extends their lead to a two-possession lead. As we take over, second down and nine. And we'll see. We got Antoine Hausler in the backfield here. And this one is intercepted. It's Jacob Thomas yet again for James Madison making a huge play. He's got the forced fumble. And now he has the interception. And everything is falling apart for Utah State. In a game which we played really well against Texas A&M on offense and on defense, we are falling apart, playing really poor on offense and playing really poor on defense. Here's a quick strike out to the right, and that is Yamir Knight for a pickup of three. Here's another third down upcoming for James Madison. Here's Joshua Douglas in the pocket. No pressure getting to him, and he finds his tight end. It's another first down for James Madison. They're set up first and 10 at the 11-yard line. Petaway the running back as he gets the snap, and he's taken down for a loss. 10 carries, 29 yards for the sophomore running back. Third down and 13 for James Madison. Douglas in the pocket. He gets out of the pocket. He scrambles to the left. There's a penalty flag down, and Douglas is about a yard shy of the first down marker. This one will be coming back, and we're going to decide to accept the penalty as opposed to declining it. We want to make them earn the first down, and we get a sack out of Marlon Dean. It'll be another field goal attempt upcoming. In that situation, I didn't want to allow them to go for it on fourth down and one. I wanted to back them up to third and 23. And, you know, if they pick up the first down, then they kind of deserved it. Here's Jack Castera on the touch pass. He's going to cut this one back up the middle, and Jacob Thomas is laying the boom yet again. Second down and three. Here's a gift to Robert Briggs. He's got the first down as we trail by 13 points as we near the two-minute warning. And here's a third down and 10 upcoming for the Aggies offense. Briggs to the left of Barnes. He stays in the block. Here's the throw to the outside, and it's Castera on the help route. And he's going to pick up a first down, his fifth catch of the first half, 62 yards. As here is Briggs cutting this one all the way back. And Robert Briggs is going to pick up nine yards. When this guy can get into open space, he's extremely shifty and dangerous. 
Here on second down and one, we get it to him again. And he picks up another first down. Robert Briggs, eight attempts for 46 yards here in the first half. Here is Bryson Barnes. Quick strike, it's Otto Tia across the middle as he's gonna pick up decent yardage. We are under one minute to go here in the first half. It's the give to Briggs and he has a first down and he is also injured on the play. We saw him leave the game against Texas A&M with a lower body injury. He now has a severe risk of injury to that right leg. He will not return to this game. Third down and nine, quick strike. It's Sampson first and goal upcoming. 30 seconds to go here in the first half. And we have Johnny Santee coming into the game here for Utah State. This is a guy who, during the spring and fall camps, was used because of his power. He is like a 64 overall running back, but he's got really good acceleration and really good power skills. He checks into the, to the game for the first time this season, and that is a touchdown for Thomas Yates. His second career touchdown. He scored against Texas A&M, and he scores to close out the first half against James Madison. You know, James Madison dominated this first half. They allowed the touchdown drive there. We had a chance to score at another point in this game, but we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot. There's no reason this game shouldn't at least be 13 to 10 at minimum, as James Madison will kickstart their drive with a six yard pickup to the tight end. Petaway play fake. Here's Douglas across the middle, and it's Yamir Knight again, and he's got another first down pickup across midfield. Yamir Knight has been the favorite target of quarterback Joshua Douglas in today's game. Second down and four, here's the tight end. He's also been utilized a lot, and he's got a lot of space to the right. J.D. Drew can't bring him down, and it's finally taken down by Andre Selden Jr. at the five-yard line. James Madison set up first and goal. Here's the give to jo uh, Petaway, George Petaway, and he picks up a couple of yards. That'll bring up second and goal from the three-yard line. Here's Petaway, takes this one to the right, fighting through contact, touchdown, James Madison. They extend their lead, it's 20 to seven here in the third quarter. Here's Johnny Santee. We spoke about him at the end of the first half. He's got good power, good acceleration. You know, his overall really isn't indicative of how he plays. Here's Santee fighting through contact, two broken tackles. That's exactly what I mean. He gets two carries and he picks up a first down. Second down and 10 now, set up the screen to Thomas Yates. And we've had three freshmen touch the football in this game out of the backfield. Third down and five, here's Yates. The gift to him, he's fighting through contact, and he's actually going to be three yards shy of the first down marker. As a matter of fact, it's 19-7. to James Madison attempted a two-point try that I must not have shown. As here is a fourth down and three. It's a big fourth down upcoming. Here's Bryson Barnes. Here's the whip route. It's Shelton Sampson. He's got the first down and plenty more. We've shown that whip route a lot in these first three weeks. We definitely like to use it. Here's Antoine Hausler. He's got the give, and he'll pick up five yards. He's been the most underutilized running back here in our offense. As here's a third down and three. Bryson Barnes getting out of the pocket. He will throw this one, and he's off the mark intended for Johnny Santi. And that will bring up fourth down and three. A huge fourth down upcoming. Here's Bryson Barnes trying to hit his man. It's Davis, and he's not going to be able to come away with the reception. James Madison turns us over on downs. Here's Douglas. He's got Knight wide open, and it is not even going to be a foot race. Yamir Knight with a huge touchdown. James Madison extends their lead, and unfortunately, I decided to run commit. They haven't even ran the ball all that well in today's game. I just figured in that situation, but James Madison, they were thinking probably the correct call. We just turned them over on downs. Let's try for a huge shot play, and it worked to perfection. James Madison has a sizable lead now in this game. It's a 19-point game. Bryson Barnes will stay out there, and he's off the mark for running back Thomas Yates. He's really struggling today as a quarterback. Here is Bryson Barnes. What is he doing? Bryson Barnes goes down, loses three yards. Third and 13. Later would become fourth down and 14. It's Bryson Barnes stepping back. Barnes will throw this one deep. It's Jack Hystero one-on-one, and he can't come down with it. It's another turnover on downs. Joshua Douglas will drop back, find his tight end, and it's a pickup of seven yards. Douglas, 265 yards, two touchdowns he's been responsible for. No turnovers. Here's George Petaway up the middle. He's got a lot of space. Petaway taken down after his best run of the day, over 50 yards on the ground. Third down to goal from the four-yard line. Here is Douglas throwing this one to the outside. He's got his man. Touchdown, Dukes. 
They continue to pour it on in this game. It's 33 to 7. What will go wrong, what can go wrong, has gone wrong here for Utah State. Here's Bryson Barnes on third down and seven. What a oddball play. And I think that's going to spell the end for Bryson Barnes' day. We're trying to keep him in, you know, keep his confidence up. He's just not making the plays at the moment. Petaway taken down. And here is Joshua Wood, the backup quarterback who contended for a starting spot in the spring. And what a play there to chase Tua Tagaloa. We have not seen Bryson Barnes make a play like that this season. Third down and nine, we give the football to Johnny Santi, and he's taken down after a pickup of three. We will go for it. Joshua Woods has Thomas Yates to his left. Three wide receivers to the right, and that's an excellent place football to Jack Castera. It's first and goal. An excellent pass there by Joshua Wood. He's making plays that Bryson Barnes just hasn't been able to make today. Here's Wood stepping up in the pocket, and he's taken down after no pickup. Third down and goal. It's Antoine Hausler to the left of Wood. Here's the pass to the end zone. Touchdown, Shelton Sampson. We finally are able to make a play. Up to that point, we hadn't played well at all. Here is the two-point conversion attempt. Joshua Wood, all day to throw. Fits that one into a tight window, and it's Otto Tia with the reception. he got some pretty solid hands. 33-15 to 15 to score with four minutes to go. Here is Douglas. He finds his man. It's Yamir Knight yet again. And he'll have another first down pickup to the 50-yard line. Joshua Douglas has been really good in today's game. Third down and five, about two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Douglas again finds his man. And at this point in the game, there's really no point in trying to stop the clock. It will continue to run. When you trail by, what, 18 points as a three-possession game, if you can't stop them, don't call timeouts. Just allow the game to end. And with that first down run out of George Petaway, that's what will happen. A dominating performance for James Madison. You know, there were times where we shot ourselves in the foot in today's game. I think that we could have had a better chance at winning this one had we not turned the football over in the red zone, not thrown interceptions to allow even you know an even bigger lead, not run committed when we didn't need to, as James Madison did what they needed to do. They played really good football. They controlled the clock. They ran 54 plays compared to our, what is that? Probably, uh, what, six, no, 60-something? So that's more so what I'm talking about. You know, I'm looking for about 110 to 120 plays per game. That's what we saw in today's game. It worked out pretty well. And I think that we will continue to move with, move forward with those seven-minute quarters. Bryson Barnes did not play good today. Under 50% completion percentage. No touchdowns, any through an interception. Joshua Wood was four for five with 52 yards and a touchdown. It'll be curious to see if there is a quarterback change moving forward. Robert Briggs, nine carries, 48 yards. That was all in the first half. He did not return after he got banged up. It allowed me to bring him back into the game, but because I don't want him to be hurt for a long period of time, I decided to keep him out and rock with the three true freshman running backs. And I thought that they did pretty decent. Jack Castera, eight catches, 100 yards on today's game. Otto Tia, who had a pretty solid day against Texas A&M. Only one reception for him, and he did secure the two-point conversion attempt. We're not, we're not establishing enough pressure at the moment. And that's something that I do kind of worry about because Imani Awesome has decided that he is going to hit us with a deal breaker. And that is playing style. We need it to be a B minus and it's currently at a C. If you're wondering what the playing style is, it's that we need to get sacks. And we have not gotten pressure on quarterbacks so far this season. We've gotten a couple of sacks here and there, but... We need to establish pressure. It was something that we struggled with in season one that slowly came around as the year went on, but we need to get after the quarterback. It'll help us in recruiting. It'll help us more as a team moving forward. But we have some exciting news here as we pass the bye week. We have picked up the first four-star commitment of the series, Mike Lemonier, a top 50 prospect. He is an athlete that looks to become a running back for us. And there is a second four-star prospect in Alex Tuttle, he is a kid that's used to this Pacific Northwest, a Boise, Idaho kid, and his two four-stars that we pick up early in Season 2. Imani Awesome, the deal breaker, has gone down for us. We now have a D playing style. We need a C-, minus, I think is what it is, or a C+. Plus. I think it's C-, minus. but regardless, it's not good enough for Imani Awesome at the moment. But I've discovered a tight end that I really like, and that is four-star tight end Gabe Shudak. 
86 speed, 89 acceleration. He's got really good route running. He's definitely somebody we're going to be going after heavily moving forward. The number one player in the state of Wyoming. So keep an eye out for Shudak. Some more defensive ends that I want to scout here. And then there's another D tackle. If we can't bring in Imani Awesome, what about Max Kuhn? He's a gem prospect, 90 strength. He's a power rusher. Let's go ahead and offer him a scholarship. We'll put five hours on him as well. Sean Meeks is a Juco sophomore here. I'm looking for speed at linebacker, 81 speed. He's a pretty good cover guy as well. We're going to go ahead and offer the Juco linebacker a scholarship. But Gabe Shudak's the guy that I'm really excited about here. 84 catching, 69 medium route running. The short route running is even better. We're, we're going to have to compete against really good teams, though. So that's something you're going to have to think about you know, throughout the recruiting battle for Shudak. Looking at the stats here through three games, we have Jack Castera, somebody who has been a favorite target. He's had a really good season. Struggled in the game against Texas A&M with drops, but we did not see it in this past game. Yeah, but we need to establish some pressure. Only four sacks through the first three games. We probably should be sitting more so at, you know, 10 sacks. But the next game is not any easier, but it is at home against the Colorado Buffaloes and Coach Deion Sanders. No more Shador Sanders. No more Travis Hunter. No more Shiloh Sanders. What does Colorado bring to the table on the road in week five? That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.